Greetings, everyone, and another very warm welcome to this edition of Marketing the Invisible. My name is Tom Poland, uh, joined today by Jeff Cobb. Jeff, g'day, sir. A very warm welcome. Where are you hanging out? Thanks, Tom. It's great to be here. I am in Carborough, North Carolina, which is effect affectionately known as the Paris of the Piedmont here. Uh, isn't that where the Republican convention has just been not held? Uh, that, was in, that was in Charlotte. This oh, is, this oh, that was, this was a very year. different place than Charlotte. All right. I should not have entered into politics. Forgive me. <laughs> Let's carry on with the, with the main event, which is here. Uh, for those of you who don't know Jeff, uh, he's a seasoned entrepreneur with more than 20 years experience in the e-learning industry. And if folks, if you don't know about e-learning, online learning courses and programs, this is a whole science in itself. Uh, trust me on this because I wasted a lot of money before I figured out that people like Jeff could help me. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it is, it's a whole science, it's a specialty. He's the author of multiple books, including Leading the Learning Revolution. And he was referred to me by someone I high and very high esteem, Danny Eney. So Danny, thank you for the referral introduction. Our subject today is how to choose the right online course platform, a question I often receive and don't feel adequate to answer, but here we've got an expert. So Jeff, our seven minutes starts now. Question number one, please, is who is your ideal client? It's usually going to be a solo expert, so a speaker, consultant, uh, author, or maybe a small business, but what they have in common is they've got deep expertise and they want a way to monetize that through educational products. Perfect. Very clear. And that probably is 70% of consultants and coaches who continue mm -hmm. to reinvent the wheel one-on-one, -on -one, but would like a more scalable way, way to help more people and generate more revenue. So uh, I've probably described a little bit about the problem you solve, but that is question number two. What yeah. is the problem you solve? How would you articulate that? And we've got yeah. six and a half minutes left. Yeah, and I, I solve a number of problems, but for purposes of, of this conversation, it's really how do you select the right platform for creating and selling those online courses that, uh, that you want to put out there. Well, let's explore that, but just so we give people a heads up, what are some of the other problems you solve or the services you provide? Just while we're on the spot, we might as well tell them. Sure. Well, you can create them, you know, but first of all, you got to figure out uh, what, what the right topic is, how, you know, what to, what to focus in on. Even if you're an expert, you know, you, you still got to get something that aligns with your market. You got to know how to market them effectively. Um, when you're creating them, you need to create something that's actually going to have some impact that, you know, people are going to find valuable and come back for more on. Um, so, I'll, you know, basically I, I treat learning as a business and I help you treat learning as a part of, of your business. Perfect. Good to know. Thank you. Um, question number three, five and a half minutes left. What are some of the typical symptoms of an ideal client for you before they find your solution? What's going on? What are they thinking? What are they feeling? What are they experiencing? That would give them kind of a heads up and go, okay, I have these symptoms. I, I need to speak with Jeff. Yeah, two big ones. Uh, one is frustration. So it might be somebody who's like already tried out a platform, tried to get out there, thought they were going to, you know, get tons of learners, make, make lots of money, whatever. And they're just pulling their hair out because they can't really get the thing to right. do what they wanted it to do. And the other one is overwhelm. Um, and people who are very often in this sort of, you know, deer in the headlights, uh, paralysis by analysis sort of thing. They just, they don't know what to do because I mean, there are a ton of platforms out there now. It yeah. seems like everybody and, and their mother is making one. So how do they pick the right one uh, that's going to fit their needs? Right. Every, every one of their mothers is making one. That's about right. I think my mom is doing one right now. Yeah. Yes, you possibly. My mom might be. She's in heaven. God bless her. Uh, question number four, and this is a really interesting one, folks, because uh, in four and a half minutes left, Jeff, pe people are generally quite smart. They understand they have these frustrations and they have these problems and they have a lack of scalability, etc. They're going to try stuff, right? And you've already mentioned one, mm -hmm. they've chosen the wrong platform. But what are some of the other common mistakes that people make that we can help folk listening to this avoid that you find your ideal, ideal clients have commonly made before they find your solution? Yeah, they'll get distracted by the bells and whistles. I mean, there's, there's a lot of pretty cool stuff out there right now. And you're thinking, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do whatever. And you, and you just, you're, you're just following those lights all over the place and, and you get distracted from what your real goals are. You know, so that happens a great deal. Sort of a part of that is you might see somebody, you know, you really respect, um, you know, who, who's using platform X. And you're like, well, I'm just going to use platform X because that's what Pat uses or whatever. It doesn't mean it's right for you, you know. Um, right. and, and we can talk about that in, in a minute. But uh, yeah, it, it, it's some combination of, of, of those uh, things that people make mistakes in. 
Great, thank you. And so two and a half minutes left, question five. Let's, let's get on to some of that advice. What's one free action that someone could take who's listening to this, not gonna solve their, their whole problem, but it'll take them a step in the right direction? Yeah, you just, you really have to get clear about your, your objectives, meaning both your business objectives and your learning objectives. You know, so what are the types of things you're trying to achieve as a business? And from a learning standpoint, you know, what kind of outcomes are you trying to create? Are you just mostly providing information? Or are you really trying to change behavior? Are you certifying people? Like, you know, what, what are you really trying to get at? And then the real key to this is you need to be very clear, think about those things, even write them down, document them before you start spending a bunch of time shopping for platforms. Because right. if you don't, then that whole, you know, getting distracted by the features, the bells and whistles is going to kick in. Um, so, so, and you're not, you're not gonna, you know, treat your objectives the, the way they needed to be. So figure out those objectives. Is it a is it a learning objective? Is it a change of behavior? Are they implementing something? Is it a mm-hmm. cultural change? Figure out your objective because that gives you context for the platform you're gonna use. Makes a lot of sense. Question six, uh, just over two minutes left. What's one valuable free resource? Where could we direct people to that's gonna help them even more? Yeah, on, on my site, you're going to be able to get a, a guide to doing platform selection right, along with a spreadsheet that helps you with comparing uh, things and takes you through a real process, you know, rather oh, than just doing a kind of scattershot. And that's at learningrevolution.net slash free guide. No, no, no spaces, no hyphens, just free guide. Fantastic. www.learningrevolution.net forward slash free guide. Thank you, sir. Well, we've got uh, 90 seconds left, so plenty of time for the last question, which is, what's the one question I should have asked you but didn't? Well, just of what I get asked often right now is, you know, can you actually still do online courses and make money at it? Um, because that's what people want to do. And, and I'll say, you know, it's getting a lot harder, particularly with your sort of self-paced on-demand courses. People have this dream of, you know, I'm going to set it up. I'm going to automate it, set it and forget it, just run right. people through this, you know, this uh, online course. You know, these days, that's kind of like having a book. And anybody who's ever published a book knows you don't make money off of the book it, it itself. You know, you've you got tons of competition out there. Everybody has a book. You make money off all the stuff around the book. And I think with online courses now, it can't just be the content. It can't just be that sort of on-demand experience. You have to be thinking more about how do I build meaningful community around this? It really helps take my learners to a different level by them helping out each other. Um, how do I provide coaching or ways to access me that are still scalable, but, but you know, make it a more intimate experience because, you know, whatever your topic is, there's going to be tons of other content out there. What's really unique about it is you and the community that you're able to create around it. And if you're going to get into online courses these days, you have to be prepared to, to think those through and, and how are we going to support those and how is the platform that you want to use going to support those? Make sure that, uh, that you're checking that. So this, this is a massively important strategic decision that people are making and, and often not giving it due consideration. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff Cobb, uh, such a rich, a short, but such a rich, uh, a wealth of information that you've provided. Thanks so much for your time and being generous with that advice. Thanks so much for having me, Tom. Thanks for checking out our Marketing the Invisible podcast. If you like what we're doing here, please head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. It's very much appreciated. And if you want to generate five fresh leads in just five hours, then check out www.5hourchallenge.com.